Good morning, everyone. How are y'all doing today? Good? Are we ready to dive right in? Because that's, that's what we're going to do, okay? Um, as you guys get situated at your tables, you will notice that giant posters have now appeared on your table, or at least more giant posters have appeared on your table. Um, and we will get to introductions, but before we do that, we will, like we said, we're asking you to dive right into the uh, exercise. So we're gonna pull up the slides here. Um, you can see that the exercise today is called Think Like a Futurist. Okay, um, so we're gonna get ourselves and situate ourselves into the mindset of the futurist. What will this future look like? Um, yeah. And we're gonna wait for our presentation to pull up here. Um, Marty, are we ready? This is a real picture of Leslie and I, by the way. My hair, this was in Florida. It actually kind of grows in this manner. Um, but it's gonna be a very quick exercise. We're gonna ask you to roll up your sleeves and dive right in. Um. Hello, can you hear me? Okay. Excellent. So um, what we are going to ask you to do is think about what this fully implemented guided pathways might look like in 10 years. What does it look like? What does it look like for your students? What does it look like for your community? How about your faculty? and your staff. And so, because in design, we always start with students first, what we're going to do is in your packet, and so everybody on your table should have a packet of information as well. Here, some of you down here, yes. You see this, yeah. So everybody should have one of these, and this has every activity that we're going to do today, um, both the big ones and the little ones, so then that way you can have, that, have these and also use these throughout your work within the implementation. Thanks, Ben. The Think Like a Futurist is separate. Where It's probably under here somewhere. Right here, yes. Okay, there you go. And so here you go. So what we're going to ask you to do is quick. We're gonna ask you to take five minutes. This is fast. You guys are going to see today that everything we do is going to be fast because we um, only have a few hours and we wanna make sure that we walk you through a lot of things. So this is gonna be fast. So what we're going to do is for five minutes, we are going to ask you to think about what a fully implemented guided pathways will look like for your students and so within these areas. So what impact will this have on your students? What challenges do you think that implementation of guided pathways might bring on for your students? What are some unintended consequences? We see this all the time. And again, this is all thinking in the future. So this is all for you. What do you think this might look like? And finally, what is the value that this will offer for your students? So one thought per bubble, heads down, and we'll give you about five minutes. You'll notice in your tables too that you have sticky notes and Sharpie markers. So go ahead and grab those. Um, use those to kind of track and, and document your thoughts. This is a the first five minutes, just an individual activity for you to think about, again, the future of guided pathways, what impacts, what values, what opportunities will your students see? Um, write down these thoughts. There are no wrong answers here. Imagine the future as you would like it to see for these students and write that, those down. Um, after five minutes, then we will convene you at your table and then you guys can share out. And just a note to our friends that are um, remote, you should have all of this information in your um, email and a packet so that way that you can participate as well. Is everybody clear? If you are not clear, just raise your hand and we'll, we'll navigate over. All right, I see some of you are already fast learners and moving to the second part, so good for you. So what we're asking you to now at your table, if you've gotten to that point, is to really have a conversation about some of the things that you identified individually, and then come as a group census this time. So here's your teamwork for this table up here. You know, to really think as a team, and so what are the really important things that you guys came up with when you think about 
again, the impact, the challenges, the unattended consequences, the opportunities, and the value. So again, focusing on the student, but what did you guys learn? What other things maybe did your um, partner or somebody from your institution come up with that you didn't think about in one of these areas? And then we'll ask you to, this table's doing a great job up here, good job, is to then put those specifically on that large poster in a post-it note, um, in a sticky. Also, if you could write it in a Sharpie, we would appreciate it because it's a lot easier to read later on. So again, a little conversation at your tables. What did you identify some of these areas? And then as a group, make a decision on what is going on that poster. Yeah, and so we'll do an extra two to three minutes for this. Okay, as you, as you start wrapping up on your student, what we're going to ask you is to move to your other stakeholder. We know that there's a lot of other stakeholders as we look at this implementation and look within guided pathways. So um, there are different stakeholders at your table. So again, we have faculty, we have staff and community. So now we're asking you to come together again um, as a group and think about the impact, the challenges, the unattended, uh, unattended consequences and so on, on your other stakeholder, on the community on the staff, on the faculty at your institution. So we're gonna do another, um, just two or three minutes for you to fill out that other side of the paper with the other stakeholder on there. All right. Um, we're gonna actually go ahead and pause and take a, a, a stop on this activities here. So any remaining post-it notes, if you would like, um, go ahead and put it onto your poster at this time. Um, and then give yourselves a quick round of applause for doing this exercise and diving right in with us. Um, one of the things that we would like to do now is actually get to our formal introductions. Um, we always like to do, we call this activities and these type of activities and diving right in a hot start. Um, I know we had a keynote speaker, but we do want to just, you know, get your, get your mindset into a space of doing. Um, you're going to hear a lot from us about um, kind of just diving right into activities and into um, all of the work that we're going to do with you today. Um, so again, thank you for doing that. Um, just again, like Leslie mentioned, we will be walking around to collect um, the posters and put them up. So anything remaining that you want to just put on there um, in whatever state it is, we will just take it and then um, we're going to put it up for a gallery of viewing a little bit later this afternoon. Um, but to get to our introductions, I um, wanted to just uh, introduce our team here from the Education Design Lab. My name is Bin Do. I'm an education designer. We have Dr. Leslie Dougherty and then Samuel Puda. Um, Leslie is also an education designer and Sammy is a, a, a education design associate with uh, the lab. And you can find our bios at the end, so we're not going to spend time talking about ourselves because we really want to dig into the work here. Um, click the slides up here. Um, so at the Education Design Lab, just wanted to give you um, a very quick overview. Again, there was a pre-read packet that was sent out and there was a quick primer on the lab. Um, so I won't spend too much time talking about us. Um, but I do want to just share a couple of tidbits that I think um, you know, will be helpful in anchoring what it is that we will be doing today. And um, we are a nonprofit organization based in DC. And we come here. This always happens to me, by the way. I always have to like lean in um, very closely. Okay, so um, we are a nonprofit organization based in DC, and uh, the work that we do, we partner with a lot of education institutions as well as employers and systems um, in order to help reimagine and rethink how we can bridge the gap for underserved students um, in their journey from uh, education to workforce. Um, we do that in a number of different ways, and so we do do things such as what we're doing today, we call a design sprint, um, which you will be engaging with us. We also do a lot of long-term engagement that can last anywhere between eight and 10 months, and other engagements that can go on for about four years. Um, so a variety of different things. And our main focus is getting to the students. Who are our learners? Um, we use a process called design thinking. How many of you are familiar with design thinking? Have used it in your work? 
Okay, a few, good. So we have one whole sister or college over here that might have had experience. Um, so that's great. Um, for those of you who um, have either heard of it but not implemented it or used it in your work yet, um, don't worry, we'll walk you through the process here today. Um, but part of the um, design thinking process, which I'll go over in a little bit later um, this morning, um, is that we do, again, really anchor ourselves into the learner. And um, and we, you know, right now, uh, there's been a conversation about who is the non traditional, post-traditional um, student, we like to call these students the new majority because really we are seeing that shift. More and more students are becoming um, the space here. Um, and, and as we think about this, we talk about, you know, in the DIY world, we know now that students have access to so much information, so much, um, you know, availability of things that they can access as far as education, knowledge acquirement. How then do we reimagine higher education in a way that is innovative and works within the system for these students? Um, the last thing on here that you see highlighted um, is that our work is uh, anchored in really thinking about this equity gap. So very similar to the mission of Guided Pathways about how do we really um, confront and address racial, social, and economic justice. Um, that is the work of the lab as well. Um, I'm going to pass it on to Leslie, who will give you a brief overview of the day, um, and then we will dive into the design thinking. All right. I'm not a very good stander, so we'll see how this goes. Um, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what this day is going to look like. As Ben said, this is what we would call a design sprint. So we're going to sprint, and it's going to feel fast, and it's going to be fast, but that's okay. And so hopefully we'll give you the tools that you can continue to use and iterate on this throughout your experience with the Guided Pathways implementation. So quickly, um, we have two parts. So we have a before lunch and an after lunch, and we're going to do some work during lunch. Sorry, friends, but we are going to do a little bit of work. But hopefully, again, you'll find it enjoyable and we'll be able to do that. So all of this information is in your packet as well. So you can see some of our times have already changed. And um, because this is all about rapid iteration, we will change times and we will cut times throughout the day. So please do not hold us to these perfect times as well. So some of the things that we're hoping, these are our session outcomes for you today. So the first one is that we hope that you leave here with a better understanding of human-centered design and really its application within higher education. Um, I think that design has you know, started sort of in the corporate world and um, we're doing more and more to try and figure out how it fits in and where it fits in within higher education, which is, again, why the lab was founded over six years ago, specifically looking how we can use design within higher education. The other thing, right, is application. Like, how are you going to be able to um, address the user needs, specifically in implementation, as you think about your strategic planning? And finally, creation, right? We're here to create. And so we're going to look for opportunities for change and collective impact, really focused on the guided pathways. So those are our session outcomes and our goals for the three hours we have with you guys today. So you guys have expectations of us and we have expectations for you guys, okay? So this is what, and this is actually, this is in your packet as well. We ask that you stay present and open-minded. Some of you guys have done this before. Great, some of you, this is brand new. And so it's a different way of thinking. And so we ask that you just stay present and open-minded throughout our time together. Um, as always, put yourself in your learner's shoes. This is what we're asking for everything as we go. You already started with a think like a futurist. That's why we started with students because we're always putting ourselves in the learner's shoes. Um, learn and experiment, right? Uh, it's okay not to know something or not to understand something, right? This is what we tell our students. So can we also tell it to ourselves, right? So it's okay not to know everything or to understand everything and that's why we're here to guide you through this. Um, listen to what others are sharing we're in a safe space, hopefully. You guys feel that way, but we want you to listen to what others are sharing. What are their ideas? What are their expectations? What are their hopes and goals for those learners? Um, ask questions, ask questions of each other, ask questions of the state board, right? Can I put them out there? Um, ask questions of us, right? So ask questions for us too. If you don't understand something, simply put up your hand. We will come. A couple of you have little stop signs 
on your table. And so those are there too if you have a stop sign. If we're in the middle of explaining something and you don't understand or somebody at your table doesn't understand, put up your hand, make a stop sign on a sticky note or use your stop sign. And that gives us an idea that we need to do a little bit better of explaining that to you. The last piece is the most important piece especially um, when you're at a presentation with Leslie and that's that we're gonna have a lot of fun, right? Okay, all right, I'll take it, we'll go for later. All right, we'll, we'll check in a little bit later, see how you're doing, but it is to have fun. And so there are things on your tables. I see that people are already playing. We have Legos, we know that um, we're creative in lots of different ways. So if you need something to do with your hands, make something, build something, create something, that's what this day is all about, all right? So, are you guys okay with all of these? Okay, perfect. Um, some things that you have at your table that I wanna explain to you um, in design thinking, those design thinkers, we love our sticky notes, they're our favorite. So you guys have sticky notes, you also have Sharpies, I already mentioned this. If you write in Sharpie, it's a lot easier for um, us to read and for your colleagues and your coworkers to read. So please, as you are applying those stickies, write them in Sharpie. We gave you enough, so if you mess up, that's fine. Just grab another sticky and write her again. Um, you should have pens. We also have instructions um, for every single activity we're going to do. There's instructions in your packet today. So if we're not explaining it well, or if you have questions, check those instructions. And again, ask questions as you need them. And then there's also some area for notes. Again, our goal is that not only can you use the tools that we have created for this gathering that we have today, but that you can continue to use them and iterate them on as you complete this whole process. If you have any questions, if you need more stickies, if your Sharpie doesn't work, anything like that, just let us know. All right, this is my friend. And this is my friend, the elephant in the room, right? So in higher ed, we have lots of elephants. I love a good soapbox, I'm not gonna lie. Just let me talk to you about transfer students and we'll be there all day. But so we recognize that everybody's coming in in a different place in a different state. We know that there are some institutions that have been doing this for a while, right? And so are a little bit further along in the process. But what we need for you guys to do, and it's in your packet, is we need for you to take a second and to acknowledge the elephants that you walked into the room with, okay? So we just want you to think about that specifically in this guided pathways. And so as you continue to create and apply with your coworkers and colleagues who probably already know your elephants, right? So we know that, but we want you to think about what are the things today that you have control over? Okay, so write one thing that you know that you have control over. What is something that you can influence in this decision? Something that's important to you that you can influence? And finally, what is something that, you know what, that you just need to accept? Perhaps it's an elephant that you've been battling for a while, and as we move on, it's just something that is a part of the process that we need to accept. This helps us ground us in the work. Yeah. That's up to you, right? I would say personal, but if you have institutional, we have additional packets if you'd like to make two as well. Uh, <laughs> let us know how many you need. But really, and I think that that's a great, that's a great question. And I, you know, our intention was a personal elephant, but if it is something institutional, I think definitely put that down as well. So you can continue to explore that throughout the day, especially when you get to a point where we're gonna have some conversations that we might need to address our elephants again based on that. Other questions? Other questions? Okay, I'm gonna give you guys just a couple minutes to get your elephants down. Okay, are we good with our elephants? As I think, was it Brian Adams told us, they will be right here waiting for you, these elephants, so. All right, so we are going, like I said, we are sprinting, we're gonna go. So um, real quick, and I know that um, Christy talked about this a little bit earlier, but again, we want to um, ground you guys in the work that you guys are here to do today, specifically within Guided Pathways. So again, um, this is from the Community College Research Center about Guided Pathways. And really, what are the goals? It's, it's a whole college redesign, right? That's everybody. A whole college redesign that refocuses community colleges on helping students earn degrees and prepare for further education or careers. So again, 
as we think about implementation and we think about the changes that are going to happen on your campus, just a reminder that this is a whole college redesign. These are the things that you guys have already talked about and that the state of Washington is said is so important to the implementation of these guided pathways. And so as you continue to think about putting yourself in your user shoes, as we continue to create and come up with ideas and spend some time um, in our understand phase today, we ask that you keep both the vision, the mission, and the values at the center of your work today. Those again are in your packet. And so we'll talk about this a little bit more um, as we get into the ideation session this afternoon. But again, asking you guys to just remember to be grounded in the mission, the value, and the vision for guided pathways in the state of Washington. So now I'm going to hand it over to Ben and she is going to tell us a little bit more about design thinking. All right, thank you, Leslie. Um, if you guys see me leaning back and I'm not loud enough where you need me to step forward into the mic, just kind of wave at me and I will do my best to make sure that I uh, speak up and speak loudly so that everybody can hear. Um, but again, um, it sounded like a lot of you in the room have had either some experience um, to little experience with design thinking. Um, so I wanted to uh, you know, take an opportunity to step back and really think about and talk through what is design thinking and how will it help us think through implementation of guided pathways? Um, the conversation in the keynote that we had this morning I thought um, really helped and anchored and dovetails really greatly into design thinking for us. Um, in, in, you know, in the conversation that we had, um, Dr. Uh, Popovic really talked about equity-focused disruption um, and really design thinking is that. Um, there are three core principles of design thinking. Empathy, invention, and iteration. And when we think about empathy, um, and, and when we think about the work for community colleges, we really believe that design thinking helps us and allows us to be fanatically grounded in the student experience. We want to be able to design for the student experience. A lot of times at colleges, and there's this traditional mental model of, you know, we're going to design to optimize for operational um, efficiency. Um, but how does that impact the student experience. Um, and so we want to start to reshift and rethink about how what we do and the process that we use can really ground us here. Design thinking is also, there's a structured methodology. Um, there is a page in your packet, and I think um, a little bit in the pre-read, and we're gonna, we're gonna dive into it. Um, we're all about kind of just stepping into the work here, but there is a structured methodology that I'll show you in a minute um, for design thinking as well. So it's not just this free-flowing thing. Um, it is a very fluid process in that we cycle through, but um, there is a structured methodology. Um, we are here about rapid and flexible innovation. Um, and so, you know, when we, when we talked about, you know, students in order for them to learn and to really kind of master their material and we talk about rapid, effortless, continuous feedback, we want to start to really shift and think about how do we incorporate those strategies into our own institutional learning in order to improve our own processes that we provide for students, right? Um, and so, you know, we want to make sure that we really embody this. And then the bias towards action, um, you know, I love this morning, it was like, don't waste a second. Let's not, let's do it. Let's try, see what works, and, and, and learn from that, and keep iterating, and, and really learn by doing. And so, in the spirit of design mind, uh, or design thinking, we're going to ask all of you to assume the role of designers today. And we're going to ask you to take on this design mindset. Um, you're going to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. There will be moments where we're going to zip you through activities. We're going to give you two minutes, one minute. Um, we're going to chime that bell, and we're going to ask you to stop what you're doing and then just, just keep going and move with us. Um, and that's okay to feel uncomfortable. Um, we're also going to ask you to let go of traditional mental models. Don't say, I can't. Just say, how might I? Right? Um, we're, there's a lot of different barriers um, that we carry with us, and we want to let go of those mental models that we know or we think are co constraining us within a system. Um, suspend what you think you know. I know it's, this is kind of a hard one because you all are experts in your domain, in your space, um, but we're going to assume the position of a beginner's mindset. 
how do we learn? How do we listen to one another in a very authentic way? And then explore what could be. Um, think about the different possibilities. Put yourself, again, back into the frame set of a futurist. Think like a futurist. How can we project forward and design the future that we want to see? Um, this is the fuzzy front end. We're going to start this morning on this very fuzzy end. We're going to work through a process, and hopefully by the, by the end of this session, we're going to get to a, a much finer solutioning space. It's going to get less fuzzy for you, right? Um, so the uncomfortable space is going to start out. That's okay. Work with us through this kind of curve here. Um, and then lastly, just the process. We mentioned that there is a structured process. Um, four phases to this process. We start with an understand phase, um, and we ask, what is, what is the current state of your institution for the students in the state of Washington, um, you know, in respect to the world at large? Um, and then we start to ideate. We come up with possible solutions, then we start to iterate on that and we get into a prototype and we're going to ask you to get and, and design prototypes. Um, we're going to go through all three of those first uh, three humps there and then um, obviously we're not going to launch anything unless you come up with a brilliant idea please share then we can all launch it right. Um, but we do know that you guys are getting to a place of having to uh, really design the implementation of guided pathways and so we want to be able to end um, our time with you here uh, at a place where you have really solid ideas about what you can take back and move forth with and, and share with your colleagues back at your community colleges and say, this is what we came up with. Like, let's try it, let's do it, let's do it now, okay? Um, and again, like Leslie mentioned, um, we will be moving very fast. There will be moments where, you know, if you're frustrated, if you need some time or space, if you need to tinker, there's tinkering toys, um, you know, that you can, you can kind of, uh, just um, take that. And then um, we go from now to lunch without a break. What that means is if at any moment any of you need a break, please do just step up and walk out. That's okay. We're absolutely okay with that. Um, when you come back, our expectation is that you'll catch up with your colleagues. Somebody will fill you in on anything that you might miss. Okay? And we're going to have fun. I promise. I think she says that for me. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're going to jump into the understand phase. Woo. Um, yeah. All right. Got some woos out there. I forgot to tell you that um, this, you have a packet of posters on your table. It is not for you to look out of to see things clearly. It's actually for you to unroll and we're going to jump in. So if you can unroll that now, we are going to start the research phase. Right. Lots of good researchers in here. Oh, uh, Zoran left. I was going to tell him you should always look at a previous presentation to see what you were wearing before you do that. So anyway, um, and that note, if anybody's going to the National Institute for City Transfer Students, we may be in the same outfits. Okay. All right. So as we jump into the understand phase, we think when we root our understanding of whatever it is that we are thinking about within the design thinking um, area, what are our, I don't like the word problem because it sounds messy, even though they are. So I like the word opportunity spaces. So instead of thinking about the problems, we're gonna think about the opportunity spaces on your campuses, specifically within guided pathways. So um, when we put together our research packet, which really helps us as we get through our understand to learn more about our users, more about our students, um, more about those that are gonna be impacted, the first thing we have to really acknowledge is what do we know? What is working? I think sometimes, um, as a as a, a former um, as a former staff member um, for a long time in different institutions, um, sometimes we jump into these things and we forget that we know some stuff already, right? We Ben asked you to suspend what you know, um, but I'm going to ask you to think about really what is working on your campuses that you think is essential as you implement these guided pathways. What do you already know that is working? Um, and really start putting those things down so we can learn more from that, both um, at your institution, but also just statewide as what is working. We have some um, early adopters of guided pathways who are already a couple steps ahead of others. So again, for those people, what do you already see as examples of what is working on your campus? Um, then we're gonna talk about what we assume 
right? That's always lots of fun. You assumed a lot of things when you thought like a futurist, right? Unless any of you have been to the future. No? Okay. So we made some assumptions there. And then finally, we're going to fill in the holes. Again, we're going to go back to the cheese and put those holes in to think about um, what other questions do you have. And so we asked everybody to do some pre-reads, right? So we're going to talk about that here in a second. But the first thing I wanted to highlight are the things that I now know about the state of Washington from the time that I had to think about um, you know, talking to you guys today. So these are things from your fact book on your website. So if they are wrong, you need to talk to somebody else. So anyway, so the things that we know are that 58% of students are enrolled in a community and technical college in the state of Washington, right? That's awesome, right? So that's a majority of the new majority are enrolled in your institutions. 52% of those students are going to school part-time. Again, as we think about you know, developing these systems and thinking about the needs of our learners, 52% of them are part-time. 39% of students that get a bachelor's degree in the state of Washington start at the community or technical college. Again, a large majority of these students are starting with you. So we know that. So who are the students? just based again as we root ourselves in what are the things that we know, right? So the average student age is 26. Does that surprise anybody? Nope, me neither, all right. 46% of students work. Is that surprising? Do you think? that I thought the same thing. Yeah, it seems a little bit low, yeah. So again, then we have to dig a little bit deeper. What does it mean to work? Are we working part of, you know, all this sort of fun stuff in there. 45% um, of your students are students of color. 38% of your students receive some sort of need-based aid to fund their education. And 25 or 24% of your students are parents. I heard a whoa over there. Yeah, okay, you thought it was higher? Okay, interesting, so again, Again, this is the fact book on um, the website. Again, these are the things that we know, not only about the colleges, but also about the students who are attending your institutions. So we continue to build upon what is it that we know. This one is a great one, right? So $20.5 billion is the amount that the community and technical colleges, their students and former students add annually to Washington's economy. Right? That's a lot of money, right? 20.5 billion is coming from the work you're doing annually to this economy. I think that's important as, again, we ground ourselves in why this is so important and as we continue to understand and know more about the work that you guys are doing. Did that number surprise anybody? That's big, we heard, okay. Yeah, so again, rooting ourselves in what are the things that we know. Uh, we sent some um, light reading material, right, okay, <laughs> to you guys. And so we asked you to take a look into some of the work that others in this space have done before you through different um, institutions, different state systems, and to really, as you read those pieces of work and research, to think about something interesting that you learned that is working for other institutions and systems. Um, what's something new or different? Maybe something you didn't even think about as you started to go down this path of implementation. Um, and again, specifically, specifically, what is working in regards to implementation? And of course, what is working for students? Where are those aha moments? Um, I call those sometimes, we have aha moments, and then I call them non-aha-ahas, right? Those are things that we're like, yeah, we know it's working, but it still never happened at our institution, and we need to build on those and really create dialogue around that. So some of the things that jumped out to me from the pre-reads is, again, and this is from the Education Dive, right? So again, we talked about um, that math. So the share of students who earned at least six college credits jumped, and then the percentage of incoming students who completed, Christy talked about this today, college level math in their first year rose from 19% to 43% with the implementation of Guided Pathways. And again, as Christy said, we know that once they get done with that their first semester, they are more likely to retain and then be successful within their institutions. So again, something that jumped out to me, something we know is working, something is working in there. This again, as we think about equity, 
This was from St. Petersburg College in the state of Florida, and this is their gateway courses. And then you can see the success rate. I know, this is a little old information, but that's okay. But so you can see the difference once that they had put in these gateway courses, such as Comp 1 and College Algebra within those guided pathways implementation. So again, you can see that there are things that we can learn from that are already working in this space. So the first thing that we have to do is recognize what we know and what is working within guided pathways implementation on your own campus or at the other institutions or things that you've heard through with the pre-reads or in other circumstances. So you have this wonderful um, poster, I can't remember the word, at your table. So we're gonna ask you to spend about, um, oh look, Sammy already has it on the clock. Look at her. So we're, 18 minutes is what we're at. She started early for me. But really think about for, I would say, the next 10 to 15 minutes, get your stickies out, and we're going to build out what we call a research protocol, and we'll use it a little bit different, to think about those things. What do you know that is working within Guided Pathways implementation? What is working? Why is it working? And really spend time with your institutions thinking about that until we move on to the next phase. Questions? Friends at home, if you have questions, um, like just tweet us. No, I don't know how to do that. So anyway, um, continue to do that at home as well. Music. All right. How did it go? Did you know a lot of stuff? Good. Excellent. So we are going to continue to build out our understand phase. And the next thing we're going to think about is some of the assumptions that we make. And so we're going to do a little persona building. Has anybody ever done persona building? All right, over there, excellent. Um, and some empathy mapping as well. Anybody ever done empathy mapping? Okay, good. So we're going to um, talk to you a little bit about those activities as well as walk you through that as we continue to build out these understanding um, our research and start pulling out some of the assumptions that we're making um, about our students, about our users, about guided pathways implementation. Um, so again, Design thinking is grounded in the student experience. So I asked um, this morning, I actually got a Snapchat from um, a snap, I guess I should say. I'm not that cool. So, okay, so I got a snap from a, cur uh, from a former student of mine, and she sent me a picture, and she said, last day of undergrad class, or first day of her last undergrad class. And again, as spending time, um, in institutions, it was very exciting, and it was actually somebody <laughs> that um, was the, one of the last people that I worked with 10 years ago at um, an institution in Illinois where I'm from. And so as we think about personas and we think about our students and who they are and their needs and their wants and their desires and what they value, I just couldn't help but think about Lori, which is her name, and we're going to ask you guys to give your student a name today, about Lori and the conversation we had 10 years ago now in that office. When she came to me, she, we were both employees of the same university, and um, it was six months to the day she started working at the university. Why? Does anybody know? Because that's the, the day her free tuition came into effect, right? So you had to work at the institution for six months. So six months to the day, she showed up at my office and she said, um, I've got some credits that I took a long, long time ago. They probably don't count, right? You guys have heard this story many, many times. And I said, okay, well, let's figure it out. And at that time, I felt like, you know, we had a lot of great options for 10 years ago for adult students. And so I said, we have this cool program that um, you go to school three nights a week from six to 10, you take one class, and we can map it out, and you can only do these four majors, but we can map it out, and we can have you out in this amount of time. She's like, I don't know, I have two small kids, right? They play basketball during the week, and I can't imagine not going to their basketball games. I said, fine, cool, cool, cool. We got another program, and um, it's on the weekends, right? And so you go to school on Saturday, all day long, it's fine, you know, all day long, you're gone from your family, and you can finish in this amount of time. And again, she's like, I mean, I work all day, you know, really the weekends are for me to spend time with my family. And I'm like, okay, all right, all right. You know, we have this online and she's like, uh, no. I'm like, okay, all right, so we'll skip right back to that. And so anyway, so we had this conversation and, you know, it came to, you know, uh, it took a while, right, as it does sometimes, but I'm like, 
all I think about sometimes when students come in is how fast I can get them out, right? Because that's what I think that they want, right? They're coming to me as an advisor to say, this is the plan, this is how fast we can get you out. And some of them are. Some of them are coming to you, were coming to me for that, but not Lori, right? Lori just wanted to know what her options were and she said something to me that day that has stuck with me forever and all of the things that I do. And Lori said, at that point, we actually worked something out and I'm like, well, if you take one night class and maybe one during the day, if it works in your schedule and your boss lets you write all these asterisks, we might be able to do it in eight years. And she said, great. And you know, and I'm like, okay. And she said, you know what, Leslie? She goes, eight years is gonna come and go. So it just matters what I have to show for it in eight years. And if it's halfway to a bachelor's degree, a quarter of the way to the bachelor's degree, it doesn't matter. It just means that I've taken those eight years and I've worked towards something. So again, it took Lori a little bit longer because we're 10 years down the road now, but uh, I was just really, it was just a really great reminder of the work that you all do and that we all do working with students and recognizing not what we think that they want or need, but really listening to them to understand better what they're telling us that they want and they need. And so I'm gonna have Ben talk a little bit about building up these personas and thinking about putting ourselves again in the user's shoes as we continue on um, this research journey. So again, think about Lori today as you guys are building these out. All right, so is this mic live? It, okay, am I just not speaking up enough? Maybe I should use... Okay, oh, okay, I'm good again. Um, so, um, so we're going to be stepping into our next exercise. This is going to be the next poster um, in your poster packet here. Um, and we're going to start to think about personas and designing and developing student personas. Um, when, we were when I was walking around and taking a peek about what you guys understand, um, a lot of people wrote down there's a lot of data available right? Um, we are data-driven institutions. We use a lot of data to make our decisions. Um, but one of the things I want to do now is step for a moment back from the data. Because the data tells us, you know, things like, oh, Lori's enrolled part-time, right? Um, but it doesn't give us the full holistic picture of the student. So we talked about earlier this morning, our keynote, um, about how do we understand holistically what the student actually needs and the supports around the student. And so we're, we're going to be doing this exercise on thinking about the, uh, the student persona and building them out. And, and personas, what they enable us to do is they give us a way to really empathize with the user in order for us to step foot into their shoes take on kind of their perspective, their point of view, and design for them with their needs in mind. And so we, we have a couple of sample personas up here, um, you know, some, bit, some larger categories of students. Um, we have our traditional students, um, you know, the student who is stepping into our community college campuses from high school. Um, they might be a little bit younger from the average age here. Um, the part-time students, um, we possibly have an adult learner um, with no prior college, but with a lot of experience. And so how do we really understand the needs of these students, and how do we, how do we engage with them and learn from them in a way um, that can help us think through solutioning for these students? And what we're going to ask you to do is a two-part exercise. We're going to do part A, then part B. I'm going to explain both of the parts before we let you um, kind of go in and dive into it. Um, but first, we're going to ask you to consider some of these categories that we put up there. We'll roll back to it. Um, and then decide as a team, um, pick one of those categories or pick a new category. Come up with a new one when you think about your students on your campus. Is there an exceptional student that you want to be able, like a student category, that you want to design for today? Okay, think about who will be entering into your Guided Pathways program. And then you're going to work in your groups um, and, and think about just who the student is. We're going to ask you, give your student a name. Make this, make this person somebody, right? This is a real student here that you're solving for. Um, give them, you know, describe some background demographics for us. Um, let us know what might be the student's goals or dreams, right? What are they trying to aspire to? Why are they there? Why are they at your campus? Um, what are some of the things that they value in their lives 
outside of the school setting, perhaps in their personal life, perhaps in their um, professional careers? What do they value? And then um, what, what are the things that are influencing their decision making, right? What motivates them? What can be a detractor? Is it their job? Are they a parent? Do they have other commitments or other things? And so you get to design and come up with a persona of a, of a student category, those who will be entering into your school, into the Guided Pathways program. Part two, after we've been able to describe that, what we're going to do is we're going to do an empathy mapping exercise. Imagine that student then now journeying through the Guided Pathways on your campus. Um, on that, there's um, a couple of questions around what does the student say or hear on your campus? What are they observing? Um, what do they do? Do they go to class every day? Do they walk in and do they talk to counselors every day? Do they ignore their emails? Like, what is it that they're doing? And then what are they thinking and feeling? How do they feel about guided pathways? Um, this is an exercise that invites all of you to really reimagine or imagine a space and step foot into it. We're gonna, this is an empathy building exercise, right? Um, if we can think about conversations that we've had with students or think about, you know, perhaps you took a class recently, use all of those experiences to build this out. Okay, so two parts. Um, we have about 16 minutes to do both parts. So we're going to give you seven minutes to start on part one. Um, part one is deciding on a student category and then going through this list of five. It's on the left-hand side of your poster. Um, so make sure you give your student a name. The student name is on the top right. Um, so give, you know, select and describe the student, okay? And then in, how much time did I say? Seven minutes? Yes, I seven said seven minutes, minutes per in se side. In seven minutes, then we'll transition into the empathy mapping exercise. Questions? Yep, I'm gonna put the categories back. Questions? Um, okay. And, and just um, as you see, there's an other up there. So if there is a, another type of student or another persona that you see more on your campus, please feel free to build out your own. You don't have to use one of the ones that we have pre-selected up there. Okay, as we get ready to transition to the other side, um, I am just curious if we could have a volunteer to share out the student, who their student is, and tell us a little bit more about their student. Any volunteers? All right, all right. We have a 35-year-old part-time student named Pat. Um, Pat has previously attempted college, um, is working in the service or retail industry, um, is a single parent, is Pell eligible, um, does have extended family involvement. Um, Pat's primary goals or dreams are to get a um, higher salaried uh, career in healthcare. Um, where uh, he or she can do that uh, close to home and not have to leave our county um, with a goal of getting out of poverty. Um, their values include stability, hope, focusing on the family, um, and they are influenced by uh, wanting to set an example for their children and schedule constraints. Awesome, anybody else? Did anybody else have somebody uh, that was similar to Pat? That they did? All right. How about anybody that had somebody a little bit different that wants to share? Instead of Leslie volunteering you to share. No, I'm good with silence. So we'll just wait. Oh, look, see? Okay. Okay, this is a, a non-traditional uh, first-generation student. Her name is Gail, she's about 55 years old. Um, financial background, she comes from poverty, um, doesn't have any academic background, but worked for about three decades at a fast food place. And her dream is to basically create a non-profit that finances the transportation of supplies 
to the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. She herself is Native American, and she's just five years ago, she started to organize um, transports um, to the res up there. And so now she wants to just get more of a handle of what that all entails, um, and she wants to scale it up. Um, one of the things that motivate her, one of the, her values is that although she um, is not looking at a long um, professional career, she wants to function as a role model to her um, multiple children and the multiple grandchildren. And let's see. What's influencing her as, in terms of motivators, detractors, challenging opportunities, um, she tends to have pretty low self-esteem. She hasn't developed a lot of faith yet in her abilities, although it's really getting better. I guess she's a real student, I just gave that away. Oops, sorry. <laughs> but also, uh, a really big challenge is that um, she sees herself as not deserving of an education, because I once asked her whether, why she sits on the side of the classroom, and she said um, that she doesn't want to get in the way of the learning of the other students. So that was very telling and something to work on and reassure her. Yeah. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, so in just, you know, in just a few minutes that we sat here, um, just wanted to kind of call out, you know, you guys did a great job in just identifying and really putting down on paper a, 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 the beginning of a persona, somebody that you can think about and really think tangibly about what their needs are. Um, you know, a student who has, um, you know, a goals and desires to really gain um, more confidence within the system will have different needs than perhaps a student who has other experiences experiences um, and maybe just wants to come in, um, it, you know, has a direction that they want to go in. And so, so building these personas, um, you know, really help us, again, anchor into the student experience and, and really figure out how do we solution around them. Um, I wanted to take a minute to call out here, too, that uh, in the design thinking process, we build personas at multiple points during the design process. Right now, we are doing it to kind of lay out what we think we know, right? We are doing this in absence of actually talking to our students. Um, generally, in, in a process when we engage with colleges and we have um, a month-long engagement or, or multiple month engagement, sorry, um, we would actually ask you all, the college, to go and talk to your students. And then after you do all of that, uh, data gathering outside of the, the quant data that you have, but look at this qualitative data and then build personas from there. Um, what are the voices that are feeding into, um, you know, that you are hearing from and then build out personas in order to de design solutions from. Um, but we're going to imagine a space and we're going to keep going with this exercise um, and we're going to transition into the empathy mapping. Okay, so now you all have your uh, student persona, and now let's step even deeper into their experience and imagine a scenario where you are the student and you are now stepping into your college in a guided pathways program. Okay, um, you, can, you can define this uh, scenario even deeper if you want to, um, but you know, let's, let's imagine perhaps the first semester in. Um, what are they saying and hearing around them? You know, are they seeing other students? Are they seeing faculty? What, like, what does that experience look like? Um, what do they do? Are they walking into advising? Are they going to the financial aid office? What are they doing there? And then what are they thinking and feeling? What, you know, and if you are advisors or if you're faculty and you've heard from these students, put that down. Um, I know a lot of you are writing directly on the posters. That's okay. Um, Part of this exercise, if multiple people want to write, the sticky notes make it easy to kind of crowdsource this type of activity. Um, so feel free to write those down. Um, there are moments in here that you might see, um, like perhaps conflicting uh, post-it notes or thoughts, right? Because the student might hear some affirmation or some positive comments from an entity, and then they might hear something that's contrary to that. That's okay to put that both on this document as well, okay? So we're going to give you 
I'm going to say seven minutes, okay? We're going to give you seven minutes. I like really odd numbers. Um, so we're going to give you seven minutes to do your empathy mapping. Um, again, you know, there's no right or wrong answers. Um, just write down any initial first thoughts um, and then put that down and then discuss amongst each other. And then we will transition from there, okay? If you have questions, raise your hand. Um, for those who are following along at home, please feel free um, to uh, also fill out your um, packets or your posters. And hopefully, um, you are in a space where you can converse and have these conversations with other colleagues. Um, if not, you know we implore you to take these exercises and sit down with a colleague at some point um, to really share out what you you know what you've um, documented and what your thoughts are. Thank you for your attention, everybody. Um, I know that was really fast, so again, bear with us as we um, journey through these activities together. Um, the other thing, one thing we didn't note before is, again, um, while we do want to get you through um, the design process, um, because of the limited time that we are with you today, we are giving you um, a taste and a sampling of some of the best activities that we find people really enjoy doing. Um, and so it, it, it is kind of an expedited experience. So just so you know, if you're like, ah, there, there's not enough time, um, we recognize that and we want to acknowledge that now. Um, but again, thank you for kind of moving so quickly through this. Um, we want to revisit back this understand phase, this designing your research. Um, so you are all in a space where, um, you know, right now we are trying to configure and try to really get um, a handle on what the current situation is um, as you roll into the implementation or continue the rollout of the implementation of guided pathways on your campus. And so as you think about this persona and the student that you might you are designing for, um, what assumptions are you making about the conditions on your campuses that enables for this student um, or for in, that enables guided pathways to really work on your campus or perhaps not work? Like what assumptions went into this building? Um, and, and, and we want you to spend just a few minutes to quickly write down um, what, are, what are these assumptions that you're making? Are you assuming that, you know, faculty will have well, I'll buy into this process. Um, are, I, there's chuckles, right? Um, are we assuming that there are uh, technology supports that are currently in place that can be leveraged, um, that data is available? Like, what are some of the assumptions that you might be making as you're thinking through this? And write that down. Um, and then uh, we're going to give you just three and a half minutes, it looks like, on here. We'll give you, well, <laughs> no, less than I, I want no. them to have five minutes. Can okay. they have five minutes? Do we need five minutes? Five minutes, all right. And, and I just want to also call out, when you're doing these assumptions, I want you to think back also about that person that you created, because you talked a lot about their values, right, and their intentions, but they're not in the room. So sometimes those are assumptions that we're making as well, just as my assumptions about Lori when she walked into my office. Think about some of those assumptions within that persona, that person that you have identified. Five minutes, thank you. Great, so we are gonna transition into the final piece of our design research framework. So, we're gonna move into my favorite thing to do, much to the annoyance of those who love me, which is asking questions. So, um, as you guys begin to explore the Guided Pathways implementation on your campus, we wanna give you guys a chance to actually think about the questions that, that might arise along this journey. Um, so we're gonna give you some time to kind of tackle that gray space. I get the PowerPoint back up. So, in the pre-read that Leslie mentioned earlier, we actually gave you guys some questions to think about already. So, we're gonna start with, what questions do you have for early adopters? So, this is for people who have already gotten their feet kind of wet in the um, designing for guided pathways on their campus. You can also think about, what more do you wanna learn? Um, and then this is also a time for you to just come up with any other questions that you have, anything that you're concerned about, confused about, observations that you have, this is your time and your chance to do that. So in that extra space on your design research framework paper, you're gonna use your sticky notes and capture all of your thoughts, questions, and place them there. And then you have also time to discuss this at your table. If you are at home, please feel free to jot down your questions as well. Um, and then you can bring these questions back to your team to discuss later on. So we're gonna give you about 10, 10, 15, Seven. Mm, sorry, guys. I lied. I lied. Seven minutes. Seven minutes to ask some questions and discuss these at your table. 
All right. So again, um, you know, we really appreciate you guys really taking time to really think about what it is that you know is working, what are some of the assumptions you have specifically within implementation as you start thinking about the strategic planning, and then also what more do you need to know? What are some of the questions you have within that? So really quick before lunch, we had um, another activity, and so um, with time, we are not going to do this full activity, but we wanted to tell you a little bit about it because we do think it's important as you continue through all the implementation phases to think about specifically identifying the stakeholders in this work. So we go back to um, that first quote by the CCRC that said that this is a whole college redesign process. So who at your college has to be involved? Everyone, yes. And so, but we know that there are different phases and different pieces of it that you will need specific people, not only for buy-in because it goes beyond buy-in, but to be key players and to help you push this work forward. So in um, your packet, you'll see we have a big stakeholder map. And like I said, this is not something we're asking you to do right now, but for you to think about through every single phase. So who are the key users? Who's in the center always? Students, yes. But so who else? Who else are the important people that you need to contact? Who do you need for feedback? Who do you need to validate some of the assumptions that you just had? Who do you need to answer some of those pre-existing questions that you put down there? Who is involved in every single stage of this work that you need to be on your team? And so we just ask you again to think about this as you continue to iterate, as you continue to move through this process in your strategic plan, to really spend time to think about the voices that need to not only be in the room, but be a part of the solution as you're moving forward. So that is on there again um, for you. Um, we are going, do you want to just talk to them or do you have any instructions for them? Okay. All right, so a couple of things. Lunch is available, which is fabulous. Thank you, Lexi, again. Um, but one other thing that we will be circling back to when you come back in for lunch is that initial social identity exercise that I had you all do in three minutes or less um, to talk about what that means and to hear from some folks who um, will share their perspective on what that looks like um, in their experience. So. Please go enjoy some lunch. We'll come back. We'll have that little um, discussion. And then um, we'll get right back into the design lab work with the video. All right. Thank you. <laughs>